Today on Logan Lee's Adventures, we go on an autumnal stroll in the secret garden of Seoul, eat out of this world traditional bites at Guangzhou Market, shop in Gangnam, and then hang out with my local friend Andre for a night out in South Korea's capital city. It's absolutely so beautiful here. Like just such a warp back in time. Can imagine being the monarchy strolling the grounds of such a majestic place. Now we're going to explore this cool, cool spot called the Secret Garden. So the Secret Garden is, well, I guess it is actually a secret because first you have to know about it and second you have to reserve your ticket six days at least six days in advance because they only open ticket slots up six days in advance but if you're here and you just found out about it they do hold back small amounts of tickets daily for the secret garden so if you're lucky and you go early early in the day in advance you can still get some secret garden tickets other than that, I'm really excited to explore what the secret garden entails. The palace grounds are so huge. Just exploring them and then in autumn with all the beautiful trees. It is such a delight. I mean, I don't even know where I'm turning with each turn. It's just a different ground, different building for Sleeping quarters, living quarters, beautiful colors. You really did note how short the doorknob is, which is quite interesting. Like that goes down to basically my grind area. I have to like to turn it open. <laughs> Before we get to the secret garden, we're exploring Chengdukjong Palace. So we had to go through this palace first to get into the secret garden. But as you notice, there's so many beautiful grand palaces in Seoul. So it's great for us to just do them like one at a time, like one per day or like two per day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, because then you don't want to like palace all out, right? Chengchukdong Palace was the second royal villa built following the construction of the Yongbukjong Palace in 1405. That's how old this place is that we're walking right now. It was a principal palace for many kings of the Joseon dynasty and is the most well-preserved for the five remaining royal Joseon palaces. And it's clear to see that from just how vibrant the architecture is. The palace grounds that we're walking on right now comprise of a public palace area, a royal family residence building, and a rear garden. The palace gained importance starting from the time of the Shongjong, the ninth king of Joseon. So just imagine how old this dynasty is. This is when a number of kings began using it as a palace residence. And unfortunately, the palace was burned down by angry citizens in 1592 when the royal family fled their boat during the Imjin War. Though the palace was then restored in 1611. And even today, it housed a number of cultural treasures. And it's really cool to see all these halls still standing in place. Since Seoul is a city of 10 million people, it feels so special and rare when you do have a large place that is famous mostly to yourself. Look at this. I mean, it's so cool to explore this place. Like, and just having a feeling of you're being one of the only ones here. Not for long, I'm sure, but while it lasts, it is pretty cool. Oh, this is literally living my best autumn boy life right now. The sunshine in Seoul, walking through the secret garden, the autumn foliage. I mean, have you ever seen a place like this before? I haven't. This is my first time experiencing all this red and gold and yellow 
It's so beautiful. I'm in like my own wonderland here. Oh, let me see if I can reach. <laughs> Goodness. This is only the entrance to the secret garden. And as we go further and further along these ancient walls, it leads us into this. How magnificent. So of course, it's not just a garden, but then there's different little villas, ponds, all for the kings and queens back in the reigning days of the Joseon dynasty. It is such a surprise to find out that the secret garden has even more to it. And you can just wander around Rome take in the autumnal leaves and the crisp air and really just feel like you're Korean royalty yourself here. I love this leisure stroll along these ancient walls as well. It's absolutely so peaceful here. The garden, though it hasn't changed much from the beginning, has seen a few different names throughout its history due to the private nature of the area and that the only the king and those he permitted could enter the space, it was once known as the Forbidden Garden. But then later it was known as Naewon or the Inner Garden, but today most Koreans know known as the garden as Biwon, the Secret Garden, or Huwon, meaning the Rear Garden, and the name mostly common used during the Joseon Dynasty period. This is what I mean by autumn. I mean, I feel like I can live in these colors forever if I can. It is just so stunning. Look at this other pond. Okay, let's go in here. Wow, everything is so bright and vibrant. The secret garden was a place where kings and queens strolled through the trees among the pavilions and allowed them to get away to relax from the hectic public lives. For more than 250 years, kings of the Joseon dynasty, beginning with the King Taejong, took advantage of the large space that takes up nearly 60% of the palace grounds to enjoy voracious activities from fishing, archeries, and banquets to planting, raising grains, and girl, I mean, I would do the same thing too if this was all just for me. The garden with its pavilions scattered amongst different valleys and sitting beside the many ponds and streams that flows through was designed to adopt to the topography of the area rather than making the area adapt to the ideals of the architecture of the time, adding just a little bit more of the sprinkle sprinkle of how special this place is. These gardens have been maintained as natural as possible with as little human touch as possible, which is why only guided tours of the area is available. That being said, when you go into the tour, after like five minutes, your tour guide is like, okay, you can just roam around. Once you're in, you're in, <laughs> literally. And then you can just leave the group or you can stay with the group if you want, or you can just leave and just hang out about in the garden as you know freely as you want but only a hundred tickets are sold for each tour per day and they can fill up fast especially during this season because look at it right so plan ahead if you want to go
The really cool story behind this pavilion right here. So the king built this pavilion actually among all the streams of water which is so beautiful here and he said that it's because it symbolizes he is the moon and the people is the water and the moon controls the water and the movements of the water which is true right <laughs> and that's basically because he was losing control and power over the people because he was spreading it amongst the prime minister and so to take back that symbolism and remind the people this is the structure that he built. Ever realize how important it is for me to be with someone, in this case Yeroon, who just appreciates and loves the same season as I do because it, it makes all the difference because then if he was a summer person, what would I do? You know, I mean, I'm not a summer person. I don't really like the beach. I mean, I do, but not like to that extent of how much we love our autonomous strolls together. So it's so nice to just be able to appreciate these little things together, like the passing of the seasons and autumn. Ooh, we love our vending machines. Let's see which different flavors they have. So many variety. You can even get coffee. You can use your travel ticket to get something as well, so you don't have to pay by cash. So, what do we have here? Zero calories, Narang Cider Zero. Nice for a post autumn walk. Now, if you can't get tickets to the Secret Garden, don't fret. There are 50 tickets available in person. Just go to the office really, really early, like the start of the day when the office just opened. Or otherwise, you can still enjoy the palace grounds. It's so beautiful and stunning here. And there's still greenery around that you can take up the autumnal spirit. This is Guangzhou Market, which is huge for thrift shopping, secondhand clothing, wholesale clothing. There's tons that we can find here, or fabric too. So, another thing that's legendary about this market is the food section. Exactly what we're going to be exploring. And then maybe we'll do a little shopping afterwards. But I'm definitely so hungry now, so let's try to get some yummy bites in Guangzhou. We're entering the food section of the market now. It smells so good and there's so many things to see here and try out. It is a rambunctious environment here. There's food from both sides. There's people everywhere. There's like cooking every like right in front of you you can see what's being made what's being prepared there's so many different styles here so many different dishes it is a whole visual feast as well as already going to be a real feast soon Guangzhou Market was the first permanent market in Korea, in the whole freaking country. And as you can see, it still thrives today. The name Guangzhou means to gather from afar and keep all together, which I find so adorable and so true because you can see the market began as a small trading center that brought in goods from nearby regions, but has now grown into this large wholesale market selling so many things, but the food street caters here to a wide variety of patrons and then so many choices plethoras of menus available for locals and internationals had to get our favorite dumplings This is a dish that we are obsessed with. Jangjangmyeon is this noodle dish and this black bean sauce. And y'all, it's so good. It's a Korean Chinese dish that is quite popular in Korea. And it was developed by early Chinese immigrants in Korea. And now it has become this just pivotal, huge part of Korean food culture. 
were on the hunt for Jo Yong Soon's Kalguksi knife cut noodles doll, which is popularized by Netflix. But just because she was on Netflix Street Food Asia program doesn't mean that this has become like a overrated place. You still have to come because the food is still freaking amazing,、uh, as you will see very soon. Cho Yun Soon first learned to make knife cut noodles from her mother, and she spent most of her life bringing up her family. But then her husband got the family into some financial difficulties. So to help pay off for the family debts, Cho Yun Soon took a job working on her in-laws' blood sausage stall at this very market. Except here's the thing: Cho really didn't like selling blood sausage, and the smell just repulsed her. So instead, she decided to put out these knife cut noodles. And put out her skills. Her mother had told her to good use and start a stall selling specifically kalgusku. See Netflix street food soul. This is the woman from the Pangtan Market making her knife cut noodles here as well. <laughs> Here is Fas. They don't know it. She is hustling, especially how busy her stall is. See the magic happening right in front of us. <laughs> Wow! Wow! Super special. 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 Super No, I'm not going to do this. 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 It looks so good. It's all like frying.、Ooh. This is it. Let's try it out now. Oh, it looks good. It is so exciting. Look at the seafood stand with all these kimchi, different dishes for seafood. Cheers. Just like my childhood.、Mm, tastes just like it. I love it. Okay, we're gonna get ready for our crab dish. We're gonna put on some essentials. This is essential. This looks so good, y'all.、Mm. There's some free samples of these octopus. Ah, this one, I'll eat it. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, okay. Hello. He said, "Ah,、yeah. biting into it."
just just gotta bite into it, like, like. Mmm. Yeah. Mmm. This is a good stuff. This crab is so well marinated. It's just like, you can taste the flavor of the soy in it. Oh, I'm in heaven. I'm in heaven. You have to drag me back on that plane. I'm not leaving. personal guide recommendation from the place that we just ate because we were wondering where to get this delicacy of octopus that is like octopus sashimi that you have to try when you're in Kwangsan Market but we're not sure which one because there's so many stalls so our guide is helping us and he's leading the way quite quick actually we're racing Oh, how wild is this? Look at this. The octopus are just moving. So this is like octopus sashimi. So basically once you cut octopus like live, this is the muscle reflex. So they're already dead, but the aftermath of it is that the muscles are still moving. So the reflexes, but it's pretty, it's pretty wild to say, oh, is this oh, jumping off the plate? <laughs> it's pretty wild to see this in person. Are you having a hard time trying to get it? No, because it sticks. Ooh. Uh, things are still working. Oh, let me try. Let me try that one. Oh, kind of hard to get. Oh, there we go. I got one. I got one. It moves around your sticks. I can feel it in my throat. A little enough to stick to your tongue too. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. That's sticky. Okay. With this chili sauce here. Gosh, they're, they're like running away. Look at that. Well, hold still. I'm just trying to eat you. It's so hard. It's real marinade now. Finally got my piece back. Because it's actually really hard. <laughs> the graphs onto it. Okay, let's let's do it. Mm. It's so tasty, y'all. Especially with the sauce. Mm. Would you eat this? Let me know in the comments. Let me know. Yes, no, maybe so. Try it out. You have a whole plate to finish. Oh, you can go. Try to get it. It's kind of hard. Mm -hmm. And it's so good, right? Oops, so moving. Oops. Ah, ah. Oh, mm, my heart fell off. Mm. Always an adventure. Nice side dishes that we have as well. Some little soupy soup. At this point, I gave up just using chopsticks and using a little bit of my spoon. Actually, that was easier than I thought. Yeah, I got it at like the right hook. Okay. The yummy chili sauce. I actually really love octopus. I've never had octopus sashimi before. Oh wait, no I have, but just not like this. I had it on like sushi before. So this is like very fresh as you can get. Mm. Oh, gooey. We have to get some fresh fruit juices. So good. <laughs> so basically, you select one of these and then they just pour it in there. Woo! 
Wee! Oh my goodness, we ate so so much at Guangzhou Market. Everything was just so delicious. I had to try them all. If I lived here, I would come here probably as much as I can just because there's vendors, there's so many different types of vendors, they're so kind and the food is so delicious. But now let's walk it off. Afternoon light in Seoul is spectacular. Look at this golden light right by the stream. What a beautiful autumn day from this morning at the Secret Garden to now. Just walking, digesting all the food that we ate at Guangzhou Market. Looking at all the street art and public spaces that's available. And then we made our way back into the heart of the city. And you can see all the lights, all the shops. I'm just taking a peek at the Ramoa shop because I love this so much. We're going to spend the evening in Gangnam now, which is the ritzy neighborhood in Seoul. And then first of all, look what I see. It's the Gangnam friggin' style sculpture. So this sculpture imitates the wrist motion of the dynamic horse dance that is popular in the music video by size Gangnam style. I mean, if you know, you know, you should have to know this. So with the Gangnam sign, you can click to play it anytime during the day. And I would just play on repeat, like out loud. Like for the most part, just here. <laughs> Welcome to Gangnam. Gangnam Star. Me, like I said, I'm still shopping, y'all. I know you're watching this, and it's like, how much things are Logan is gonna like buy? He's like continuously shopping but the clothing here is seriously next level they have so many great pieces everywhere that i'm like uh, i need to buy everything consumerism capitalism i love it though please don't judge <laughs> So cool here at the Starfield Library. Oh my gosh, look at all these books. I am truly in paradise. Like, just leave me here. I'll stay here. Look at all these people just chilling. Oh my gosh, I would just spend all my days here. Like, this is truly somewhere that is absolutely so magical to me. And these are all real books too. Like, yeah, all the way up top. Next, we hop onto the Seoul metro system. Look at this map. Look how intricate it is. Put so many cities around the world's metro system to shape. To shape. So we take the metro system to this restaurant on the other side of town. But it doesn't take long. It's like 40 minutes to get there. And we meet up with our friend Andre. And if you remember Andre from my previous Seoul vlog, he has been living here for half a decade. And this is one of his favorite restaurants in the city. So we have to check it out. That's some kind of fish. Okay. This is the pickle one. That's the seafood one. Oh, okay, so that looks the same as this because it's yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. okay, yeah, so this is the uh, food. That's the most, uh, the most polite form. Mashike de seo. Mashike de seo. Mashike. Mashike de seo. Mashike de seo. Time we did, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna confuse people. Yeah. <laughs> so that it's really Korean, and I think it's a great spot for tourists. Very nice. That's the idol for the video. Yeah. 
Yeah, the subway system is really impressive. I don't know if you guys have looked to the, ex the full extent of no, it, no. but you can go like way up. I'm surprised that yeah. this is still being served. I mean, there's some way. Absolutely love all the lights all around here. It's so dazzling. It's so much to see. And a uh, squid or octopus tentacle dried. Oh, I love yeah, the dried squid. This we eat in Vietnam a lot. I love it. It's actually so warm out. Like I'm not even cold. Wow, I mean, if I see things, I'm not. Okay, I want them too. Uh, hold on, hold on. Do you have some choice? Like, all the words, all the good words. Yeah. This is so cool how she does it. This is right on top. Oh! Reading. Oh, you're getting really sticky here. One tiramisu and one. Which one should we get? Uh, green tea. Green tea. Look. Okay. So I always keep wondering because I see this around. Yeah. Is the cruffle really croissant press? Yeah. Or just a shake. No. I told you. It's the puff pastry, but put in a waffle. We're back at Chungi Chung's dream. And with all the different snacks that we got for tonight, we're going to go down to have a little picnic by the stream, which is very scenic. These stone crossings. Oh, yeah. Back home, be like, That's dangerous. You the city. Yeah. A lot of fast people. Now this is the sweet bean bread. Mm. Just like how I like them. Red bean paste. Very brave. That's that's a thing. I believe the Icelanders have a cow. Mm. Young gang. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember exactly what it is, but that's a sweet potato version. It's a jelly type thing. Candy. I don't know how they thicken it. Yes, it's a dessert. Uh, I don't know. I don't oh. know anything about it. I know it's very traditional. Berlin Wall in Seoul. Yeah, that's the symbol Berlin. It's the actual piece of the Berlin Wall to represent how Back then, East and West Berlin, East and West Germany were divided, just like how now North and South Korea is divided. It's huge, actually. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm going to get one. It's, it's, no, it's not really common with that. Flavor <laughs> so like, pine, but in a drink. Yeah. Okay, we'll get it too. Um, Try it out. Actually, that says genitals. Oh. Huh? Oh, I 
wanted it to be done. Yeah. <laughs> I am so smitten by the place that Andre has taken us because it's just such a cool dive bar like hidden in this building, this derelict building. So we're gonna enjoy the rest of our night. So for now, because we have a lot more Soul Adventures coming your way, give this video a like, hit subscribe, leave me a comment below what you like the most out of this jam-packed foodie video that we had. And see you in the next Soul Adventure. Love you, Logie Bears.